Welcome to Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. I'm Michelle Fitzgerald, aka Fitzy, and I'm an independent advisor with Creative Memories Scrapbooking, and I'm here to help you make your scrapbooks fabulous. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. I hope everyone's doing well and is getting into the holiday spirit if this is something you celebrate. I guess I am. <laughs> It says naughty, naughty, naughty. I have not been naughty. Well, maybe not too naughty. <laughs> all right. So anyway, um, I'm so glad you could all join me. I'm excited because I've had just in the past couple of weeks, a few of you from YouTube join my subscription group with my team. And that's really exciting. So we've been having fun meeting you. So I want to give a shout out to Jean in Colorado and Jenny in Minnesota, and Tracy in Massachusetts. <laughs> Yay! Thanks for joining, girls. Having a lot of fun with you, and hope to have more fun as time goes on. All right. Um, and you are always welcome to join our subscription group. It's called Crop Crew, and we charge $25 for a quarter, so that's less than $10 a month. And we do a, uh, at least a, a layout every week. And sometimes we throw a Saturday crop in there on a month. And we just had a Saturday crop yesterday. So it was a lot of fun. And, um, and we do all of it through Zoom. So it's a virtual event. Uh, the classes are weekly on Zoom. And we mix it up. So that way, if you know, one week it might be on a Tuesday, the next week it might be Thursday or Wednesday. So that way, if you have something that you do consistently on Tuesdays, you can catch us on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So that makes it nice. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me and uh, you will see my email once I go down to my workspace. All right. And speaking of my workspace, let's get to it. Let's get scrapping. <laughs> All right, so let me just switch modes here. Here we go. Um, so I'm gonna show you a little something from, again, the 101 scrapbooking ideas and sketches. And see here, it's got the three fast formulas. Very nice. Um, I think I had a couple of people reach out, but unfortunately I have sold out of these books, so I don't have any more at this time. Um, but if I come across any, I will make that known to all. All right. So today I'm going to be showing you, it's a really simple one, actually. Uh, it's a sketch on page 76. And, you know, again, it's got the measurements on it, so it's not that complicated. But I'll also show you how to combine it, um, how to make it into an 8 by 8 layout as well. So we're going to create both a 12 by 12 layout and an eight by eight layout. And I'm gonna show you a little tip on a new punch that has come out and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So I'm just gonna put this to the side for a moment so you can get a look at what I've already created. All right, so this is from that sketch and I used this really, Fun new collection, and I believe it is called Adventure Parks, and I am having a blast with this, and it came out at such a good time because I have all my pictures from that magical place down in Florida that I want to scrapbook, so um, this is going to be great for that, and I'm having so much fun with it, all right, and then here is my 8x8 eight eight version. So again, when you do the eight by eight, you have to kind of scale it down a little bit and make some adjustments. But I think you get the same feel that you have here on here. Um, and it's great if you're looking to make a smaller album, maybe it's a vacation album that you're working on or a recipe album or a gift album. Maybe it's an ABC album for a younger child. I mean, there's so many things you can do with an eight by eight sized album. I happen to love them. Um, so I do the majority of my scrapping in a 12 by 12 size album, 
but anything special or a gift, I usually tend to go to my eight by eight size because I love it. All right. Uh, it makes a gift quick and simple, but so personal because you made it, right? And this is gift giving season. <laughs> All right. So one thing I want to show you about the punch, let me just put this off to the side. So we have a new punch here. And of course, I can never remember the name of it. And I'm trying to find, so it's called admission ticket. All right. So it's a cool punch. I really like it. But there are two different looks, in my opinion, that you can get from it. And I'm going to show you how to get both looks. So let me show you what I mean. So I did two on a piece of scrap paper. So if I do it exactly as is, this is what it looks like. And it comes out, you know what, I'm gonna flip this. Yes, and then you can see. So what I want you to look at is the end, okay? So you get a half a ticket on each end, all right? So that's if you put it in and you use, you line up at one of these two black marks, okay? That's what you're gonna get. So let me show you and then after that, I'm going to show you the other look you can get. Well, actually, I have that one here. But the other look is, and ignore this part because it was just a piece of scrap paper. But what I did, and it would come out like this on both ends, a full-size ticket with that little like perforated edge on the end. All right. Um, and if you notice, oops. I did that here, all right? So see how I did the little perforated edge on this side and the perforated edge on this side. So I'm gonna show you how to do that because this is such a fun punch and it gives you a little more versatility when you know the other way to do it as well. So I'm just trying to, oh, there's never enough space on your table, is there? <laughs> And I feel like I've been cleaning it off all day today. All right. So on this particular punch, I want you to look at the tray on either side. Now, it's not a frame punch, so I don't want you to get confused with the frame punch. But if you look on this tray and you look at the bottom, you're going to see this little like blue arrow. Oh, there we go. See that blue arrow? So we're going to use that as our starting point to get that perforated edge look. So what we're going to do is line our paper up at that arrow, like the midpoint of the arrow. All right. And we're going to go ahead and punch. And we're going to cover the pattern just like we normally do when we're using one of these border punches. So we're just going to go for a little bit. All right, so see how we have one side and we have that full ticket with the perforated edge. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it over just like that and put it back into my little punchy thing here. I'm going to cover the pattern with the very last one that I did with the very last punch. And now I have it on both ends. All right. So that's how you'll get that full ticket look with the perforated edge fun, quick, simple, and easy to do. And now it gives you a little more versatility with this punch, which I love. And another thing that I think this would work really well for, um, doesn't this kind of look like the belt of Santa's suit? Just saying, 
punch it out in bronze or gold shimmer. And I think that would be really cool, right? <laughs> so just like to give you some ideas on how a punch can be a little more than what you, well, face value, I guess. So, okay. So that's my little punch tip. Although I'm not using this particular punch on what I'm doing now, but where I used it on that layout, I just wanted to make sure I showed you so you would know how to create that look. All right, so I'm gonna move this over to the side for a bit. Oh, we'll bring that back, I promise. All right, and I'm gonna move this out of the way. Oh, we need space. All right. So today, what I'm going to do, I'll start with the 12 by 12 layout. And that's really simple because the measurements are all here. Now, I'm not going to do the mats on this today, just so the video isn't crazy long. But on the sketch, your photo mats, you have six photo mats on this page. Actually, seven, I'm sorry. And six out of the seven are three inch squares, okay? The big one in the middle, number seven, is a four and a quarter inch square, all right? However, when I look at my page here that I created, let me bring it back in view for a sec. I just wanna show you, there's a lot of space here. So I think you could get away with a larger photo mat if you don't want to make your photos as small as you would need to make them to fit into these maps. Because what they're suggesting is a two and three quarter inch photo for each map. Now, sometimes that works out great because maybe you have some pictures and they might not be a great photo, but you still have some people in it that you want to have on your page. And just a little photo will work well, right? Um, and then this larger one could be a really good photo. The, the focus of your page photo is how I would look at that one. All right. Um, but just keep in mind, these could be a little larger. There is a lot of space here. So I always say try to work with what you're using for your photos. It is your page. You want it to work for you in your photos. All right. So... The first thing we need to create the sketch is a base piece. So for this one, I am using the Island Waters Totally Tunnel Paper Pack and Island Waters Cardstock. All right, so I'm gonna put one piece aside because that's gonna be for my eight by eight layout. And the papers I'm using, I hit them upside down, okay. I'm gonna be using these papers from the Totally Tonal Island Waters Pack. So if we look here, it's got that really cool pattern. Um, we have this little grid pattern on one side. And then, I mean, the colors in this pack, they're just beautiful, but you know me, I like these colors. And this reminds me, um, remember the dot matrix printers we used to have at work? <laughs> and you'd print something out and it would come out. It looks like that paper, doesn't it? It's so funny. Everything comes back, right? Okay. So anyway, I'm going to put these to the side. Now, you don't have to use two different pieces of paper to create this layout. However, if you want it to be a two-page spread, then yes, you will. If you're just doing a single page, then you could use the front and back of one piece of paper and you'll be fine, all right? Um, but eventually I will make this into a two page spread. So let me just move this out of the way and I'll get my trimmer up here and we'll be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna take each sheet. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut off a half inch.
And oh, I want to make sure this is kind of a directional print. So I think what I might do, let me think about this for a sec, because I didn't use directional before, I don't think. Well, either way, I'm going to be okay with it. But I think what I might do, let's see. Yeah, this is right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a half inch off. So with a directional print, what I would like to have happen is have my stripes go horizontally on my page. So if that's the case, I'm going to put it into the trimmer the way I want to see it on my page. All right. So now I'm going to turn it once and I'm going to cut it at the five and three quarter inch mark. And that five and three quarter inch mark is actually on the arm of the trimmer. And it's the fourth line. Let me see if I can uh, point that out. I'm gonna have to stand up to do this. <laughs> All right, so we've got, it's the fourth line here from the number six, before the number six, all right? That is your five and three quarter inch mark. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna line up to that five and three quarter inch mark. Make sure I'm straight and go ahead and cut. And then I'm gonna do that again. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave this alone and put it to the side. I'm gonna take my other piece of paper and I'm gonna do again. Now this is an all over pattern. Um, I might just be aware of what I have on the back. I'm not using the side, but I think I like this pattern to go up and down if I'm gonna use any more of it. So I'm just gonna flip it over. So the pattern on the back is up and down. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut at the half inch mark. All right. So these two strips here are just scraps. Might be able to use it for something else. Those are half inch strips. Those always come in handy. <laughs> and again, we're going to cut at the five and three quarter inch mark, which is that fourth line before the number six on your trimmer. All right, and this is extra. So we're gonna put that over to the side. I'm gonna put my trimmer away for a bit. And now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna flip these over. And now I'm just going to line these up. This is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Oopsie, did I do this wrong? Oh, I didn't turn it. Ah, <laughs> see, we learn something new every time. So I'm going to go ahead. And just cut a half inch. Oh, it's so nice when you can fix a mistake when you scrapbook, right? <laughs> All right, so there we go. Like that. And I did turn my first sheet, so that's good. And now we have just about a half inch frame around this whole piece here. So now I need to just do a little something here. Um, so what I'm going to do, because I really like how the Island Water Cardstock looks, I'm going to come over here 
and I know I need this eight by eight. I need this to be an eight by eight sheet for my eight by eight layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out an eight by eight inch square. Hold this piece to the side because I'm gonna use that to create a border. All right, and this is just extra. So here's my eight by eight piece. Now, something else I wanted to point out about the difference between the 12 by 12 page and the eight by eight inch page, the standalone border punches are wider than the border maker system cartridges, okay? So because this was a lot wider, I opted not to use the ticket punch on my eight by eight page. Instead, I used this new camera and heart, which is called Shutter Love, I believe. It's super cute. I really like it. And it works on a lot of different type of layouts. So it's nice. All right. But do you see how it's a lot thinner? It's not as wide as this one. So it doesn't take up as much space on your page. So I think when you're creating the eight by eight layout and you're trying to um, copy what you did on a 12 by 12 page, I would opt most likely to use a BMC because it's a smaller border. It won't take up as much space and you'll be able to get more photos on your page. All right. So now I'm gonna come over here to my little cartridge and I'm gonna create a border. And something else I did on this one, I don't know if you can tell, see this little bit of shadowing here? So all I did is I made a, um, I punched with black cardstock first, and then I punched with the decorative paper and put the decorative paper over the black. And it just gave it that little bit to give it a little more dimension and make it a kind of stand out on the page a little more. All right. <clears throat> Now, the border maker system is my one of my favorite tools, I think. <laughs> it's, it's just a quick and easy way to get a fun little design on your page without taking, I don't know, so much time. I see a lot of people use their machines to make die cuts and layers and all that. And, you know, if you're not on a time restraint and you have the time, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. However, if you're really trying to get things done, you need things to be quick and easy. And that's what the border maker system does for you. So that's my two cents on that. <laughs> oh, and look at, it punches out little hearts. Aren't these cute? I don't know if you can see them. That's the fallout from the cartridge. Little hearts, super cute. You can never go wrong with some hearts, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just get these scraps out of here. I know I will use hearts. All right, so let's move this over. Oh, and isn't that cute? That works perfectly for this layout. So let me just get that tacked down. And <laughs> does anybody else do this? I might've mentioned this before. So it's cardstock. So it's the same on both sides. And I swear, every time I go to put tape runner on it, I always flip it over. <laughs> it's like a habit, right? <laughs> Please put in the comments. So I don't feel like I'm the only one who does this. 
I can't get out of that habit. <laughs> All right. And I'm just going to line this right up where the two pages kind of meet. All right. So there's our 12 by 12 page. And then all I need to do is create my mats and put my photos on my mats and embellish. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't know what photos I'm putting on this yet. And again, I just don't want the video to be too long. Um, I don't want to make you all sleepy. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to come back here and see if I can use these scraps that I already cut. And we'll see if we can make this work. So if you haven't already done so and you are creating with me, make sure you have a piece of eight by eight inch cardstock, okay? So that's the first thing you need for your eight by eight layout. Excuse me. Just got really choked up there for a minute. All right. So now I'm gonna come back to my sketch. And I had my pencil here. What did I do with it? Oh, it's hanging off my desk. <laughs> All right. So just so you can get a sense, because sometimes it's tricky figuring out how to make this the same layout work for a different size layout. So I'm going to do my usual with my plus sign design. And I'm going to come over and just kind of find the center point of my sketch. That looks just about right. Ooh, and I have a crock pot meal going right now and I can just, just got a whiff of it. It smells really good. <laughs> oh, it's crock pot season, right? All right. I'm getting my center point here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly center. You just want to get in the ballpark so you can get an idea of where you should be at. So I'm going to draw my plus sign. And now I have my four quadrants. One, two, three, four. Now, because we're doing this as an eight by eight page, my squares are going to be four inch squares instead of a 12 by 12 page, which would have six inch squares. All right. So we've got a four inch square here, four inch square here, four here, and four here. So it's an eight by eight page. On the 12 by 12 page, we cut a half inch off of one side. So we're gonna do the same thing on the eight by eight. So on one side, we'll cut a half inch and that'll now be seven and a half inches, okay? And now we'll rotate that once and this time I'll remember to do that. <laughs> and then we're gonna, um, what we did here, the width, ended up being five and three quarters of an inch. Now, if I add five and three quarters and five and three quarters, I get 11 and a half inches. And that's what this paper, um, taking a half inch off that sheet, made it an 11 and a half inch uh, wide paper. So we need this, to be seven and a half inches. So I'm gonna come over here and I know three and three quarters times two is gonna be seven and a half inches. So it's gonna be seven and a half by three and three quarter inches. I hope that makes sense. So um, just think in terms of eight by eight, just whatever size page you're working on, always have that in your head. This is an eight by eight page, um, or it's a 12 by 12 page, whatever you're working on. So that way um, you'll be figuring out the correct measurements. All right. So I hope I didn't confuse anybody on that. 
So let me go here and get my trimmer. And I'm gonna pull out my arm. Trimmer arm, that is, not my own arm. <laughs> I need that. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is get seven and a half inches of width. So I'm gonna put this in so my longest edge is horizontal. And we are gonna cut at the seven and a half inch mark. I just wanna make sure it's late. And then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna cut at three and three quarters of an inch. Now, if you're cutting from full sheets, you're going to do the same thing. You want seven and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. And see how that fits nicely on the eight by eight cardstock. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing with our second sheet. So let's go ahead and cut that seven and a half inches and then we will turn it and we will cut at three and three quarter inches. Great. You can put the trimmer away. Oopsie. And let's go ahead and tap this down. And I think I like my checks on the bottom. And this is going to work with any paper you have. And like I said, if anybody has questions, my email address is right up here at the top. Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks at gmail.com. And you can also join our Facebook group at FRQ Glitz Girl Scrapbooking Group. And if you don't already have an advisor, I would love to be yours. And you can check out my website at www.creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash Michelle Fitz. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make another border. Again, I'm using the Shutter Love with the Island Water cardstock. Great. If you have any little sketchy things, just go ahead and cut them off with some scissors. Sometimes they tear off pretty easily too. Now on the eight by eight, this is obviously going to be longer than the page. So you can kind of center it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some tape runner on. We have started putting up our Christmas decorations here. It's so exciting. All right, and I'm just gonna to try to center it as best I can. Back that down and then I can take my scissors and cut off the extra. All right. And like I said, I'm not going to do the mats and the embellishing on this one, just because I don't want the video to be quite so long. But at least you get the idea. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And then these two, again, not exactly the same, but very close, right? We're in that ballpark, which is great. <laughs> so look at that. Now I have two more pages for my nice little 8x8 eight eight album and two more pages for my 12 by 12 album. And um, that makes me happy. <laughs> so I hope that you all enjoyed this.
Let me come back up to me. Let's see where I'm at here. Here I am. Hello. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I have a growing team. I've had a few members from YouTube join our team. So very excited about that as well. Um, so I would love to have more people join us and have some fun if you are interested and just want to have a conversation or ask questions please feel free to reach out to me all right and if you like this video so important please hit the like button and please drop me a comment let me know what you think what are your thoughts do you like this um have you ever made an eight by eight album i'd love to know <laughs> All right. And if you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Um, the more people who subscribe, the more my videos get out to more people. <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and so glad that we can share a little time every Sunday night making some fun stuff. All right. With that being said, I hope everybody has a great week. Thanks for watching and bye for now. <laughs>